What's going on today guys? So we are in the garage. We're gonna be wrapping up the 08 today. We're gonna to be starting that up, making sure there's no leaks on the injectors, making sure everything is good with that. So we're gonna be doing that and then we're gonna be cleaning the garage and a couple other little things because the garage is a complete mess. Usually if I finish up a job late or something like that, I usually just go inside. I don't clean up right afterwards. If it's late, if I don't feel like it, I just designate a whole other day to cleaning that up, making sure the shop's good to go. So it's still a complete disaster right now. We're gonna wrap that up after we make sure the 08 is good to go. So where we left off last was pretty much everything was, I think, buttoned up. I lost a lot of light there at the end, so I just wanna make sure everything is plugged in, connected, everything's tight, ready to go. Just double check myself one more time. On the older trucks that aren't high pressure common rail, you worry about bleeding, lines, stuff like that. Now, on these common rail trucks, they are self-bleeding, so you don't really crack lines, anything like that. It takes a little bit longer to crank a little bit. Usually, I just bump the uh, air dog for it to cycle a couple times, let it work itself through, and then usually it doesn't take that long to crank. But under no circumstances, don't try cracking lines. The air will work its way out. All right, so I've double checked everything. I know everything is tight as far as I know. Uh, everything is plugged back in correctly. One thing that you do want to have handy is one of these lights or any type of really bright light. That way you can check all the lines at the rail and at the motor. So make sure you have this because in the back it's kind of hard to see. So let's fire this thing up. I'm gonna consider that a success for now. Um, like I've mentioned before, I'm a firm believer in not rushing, you know, make sure you know what you're doing ahead of time. Read up, read on the forums, you know, watch videos like this. That will really help with the success rate of doing something like this. Uh, you do have a possibility to uh, have something go wrong in the middle and then when you're all done, end up being wrong. And you don't want that. So really make sure you take your time and usually that leads to a positive outcome. So like I mentioned, we're gonna clean this mess up, put the table away. I still got the cores. I need to box the cores up to make sure those get sent out, get this tool cart all put away. Once that's all done, we'll hop back out, take it for a quick road trip, bring the light along. I had it running for about 15, 20 minutes. Everything looked good. I checked it multiple times, but we'll get it out on the road, do a quick road test, bring the flashlight along, stop somewhere, make sure we still don't have any leaks, everything's running good, and we will call this job done. I can't remember if I showed it in the install video, but you can see, if it ever focuses, you can see. All right, so there you can see a little bit better, and this is actually one of the better ones. You can see there's all kinds of crud and crap on these injector tips, and that's normal. That's nothing to be really worried about, but what you do want to do, um, especially before you put your new injectors in, I have this attachment for my vacuum that I use to stick down in the injector bore, really to make sure anything down inside the cylinder head is completely clean before you push your new injector down in there. All right, so here's my fancy tool. You can see here's the end of my vacuum hose, and then I really just have rubber hose, you know, bushed down to freaking plastic tubing. You can see the size it's just real small, maybe like a half inch or so by the time it necks down to that. And you know, I just stick it in here in the end of this. And then especially when you're doing like studs and stuff like this, you can really point this, you know, straight down and clean up that injector board before you put that in.
too bad. At least we can walk through here. I still want to hang that grill on the wall. Haven't got to that. Everything looks decently clean. Top of the toolbox is cleaned up. Core box is ready to ship out. The other thing that I forgot to mention that we're going to be doing today is the Hidden Hitch video, which if you haven't seen it, it's pretty far down at this point, but the Hidden Hitch on this truck, we are going to start making some of these. I've had a couple people ask for them, so I'm going to try and start knocking out a couple of those for those who want them. Don't know how many I'm going to have for sale at this point, so if you are interested in one, let me know, but I'm not really giving any ETA, any price at this point. I really want to get a couple built, see how long it takes me, see what I got into them, and then go from there. So, now that the garage is clean, I'm going to take that plate off real quick, and then we are going to go drive this thing just for a quick minute. Alright guys, we just stopped and checked for leaks. Everything looks to be in good shape again. I'm gonna get on the highway, do a little do a little highway pull. We just stopped again to check for leaks after we gave her a little bit of throttle here. Everything looks good, so we are going to head home. Uh, it looks really dark in here. I mean, actually, it doesn't look that bad on the camera, but it's funny because it's, I don't know, it's 5.30, and it looks like it's about 9 o'clock inside here with all the tint. Uh, if you are wondering, I have gotten this question a couple times. This truck has... 5% and 20% on the side windows, 5% on the back, and then I believe it's like 30 on the front windshield. So it was all done in a couple different different times, but if you need my recommendation on tint is don't layer the sides or anything else. You literally, when it's, when it's dark on an unlit road, you can't see crap. But if you're ugly and that's what you need, then all the power to you. New injectors definitely feel a little stronger than the last one. So the last ones, it could be the injectors or the CP3, but uh, they were definitely getting a little weak, I can tell. But everything looks to be good, so I think the tow rig for the upcoming season, I don't think it needs anything else. I think it's actually in pretty good shape. So uh, maybe a couple odds and ends here or there. I mean, obviously the build's never done, but as of right now, I think I'm pretty happy with the way that it's running. The person behind me is getting very impatient. This guy in front of me is going like freaking 10 miles an hour. Come on, man! Alright guys, anyway, I'm going to wrap up the video. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for more videos to come very soon. Also, I am going to be doing updates on Jesse's truck and Ryan's truck and also Andrew's truck. Pretty much everybody's truck that you see, all their work gets done in my driveway. So you're going to be seeing updates on, on everybody's trucks. But thank you guys. I appreciate it. I am home now. I will see you guys on the next one.